The following message is from King's Church 1066, based in Hastings, Bexhill and the surrounding area. For more information, head to our website, kings1066.org. Thank you very much. Well, that was a great video, wasn't it? Don't you look good in a hat, Sam? Fantastic. Well done. Well, it's so good to be with you this morning. I've enjoyed uh, the service and uh, what a great band you've got. Let's give it up for the band this morning, shall we? That's wonderful. I don't know how many of you know uh, about Compassion already, but Compassion's been going for well over 70 years. And in that time, over a million children have gone through our programs. And then currently, 2.2 million children are registered on over 8,000 projects in uh, 27 developing nations around the world, in uh, Africa and Asia and Central and South America, and their lives are being changed forever. And if you are an existing Compassion Sponsor, you'll never know the difference that you're making. You're helping to change communities. You're helping to change lives. You really are. And uh, uh, I just want to encourage you this morning to be open to what God might say, uh, you know, when it comes to investing in a child like Gifty or a child like Kikeli. And uh, these uh, little ones, who knows what they can become. If you've got a Bible this morning, just turn to Exodus chapter 2, Exodus chapter 2, and uh, you might be on a device or it may even come up on the screen behind me, Uh, but Exodus chapter 2, and we're going to read a fairly well-known story just for a few moments. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it amongst the reeds along the banks of the Nile. His his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds, and she sent her slave to get it. Uh, She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered, uh, the girl. Uh, So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Uh, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and uh, nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Let's just pray this morning, shall we? Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love to us today. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you for the privilege of living in a country where uh, we have so many great things and so many opportunities, and uh, we're blessed, God. So thank you so much. Would you speak to us from your word afresh this morning? Would you inspire us? Would you challenge us? Would you correct us Uh, and cause us to love you more and to be uh, your disciples in the world today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, In the NIV version, verse 6 says this, and when she, sorry, in the authorized version, the the verse 6 says this, and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Hey, if you've never read this story before, you probably will know the story, maybe through the film, The Prince of Egypt or the stage show. It's an incredible story of deliverance from captivity and the creation of a nation. uh, And it centers around this guy called Moses. It's a picture of God's plan of salvation demonstrated through his love for mankind to bring people out of the slavery of sin into the family of God through his son, the Lord Jesus. Let me give you some context to the story that we've just read. In chapter one, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he's concerned about the rise of the Hebrew people in his land and the fear of being outnumbered. 
So he says to his advisors, we've got to keep them down. Let's take away their freedom. Let's make them slaves. It says that Pharaoh was ruthless with them and made their lives bitter. You know, he also wanted to control their numbers. So as babies were born, they were killed and they were thrown into the Nile. Uh, Can you imagine the fear and the pain and the heartache that was going on amongst the Hebrew people at that time? Maybe much like the horror and the suffering that is going on with so many around the world in war-torn countries. We think of Ukraine right now, don't we? With thousands of refugees and with displaced people and hundreds killed, including young children. Now into this situation, a young boy is born and his name is Moses and he was born into slavery with a death sentence on his head. You know, this child hadn't done anything wrong. He'd just arrived on the scene, but already there was a death sentence on his head. What chance did he have? What hope was there for him? You see, this was his people, but the oppressor was out to get him. He was born into the wrong postcode. You see, it was the GO postcode. Go with me on this, okay? The area was Goshen, the GO postcode, where the Hebrews lived. Not the TH postcode, Thebes, where Pharaoh lived. You know, a a person's opportunity uh, and lifestyle and fate are often linked to the postcode or to the area or even to the country that many are born into. There are currently 375 million children in our world who were born into a postcode of poverty, of suffering, of captivity, of abuse and exploitation. It's as though they're in their Goshen, their GO postcode, with no hope of getting to Thebes, of getting to the TH postcode, as it were. There are children who are caught up in forced labor. Just like the Hebrews, where they're having to make uh, their form of bricks without straw. Many children having to work 16, 18 hours a day just in forced labor, maybe in bonded debt because the debt was taken out way back in their history. And uh, that's been handed down through the generations and they've never been able to pay the debt because the interest has been so high. And so it keeps them in a position of slavery. Or maybe many children who are caught up as child soldiers in civil wars in their country. Many children who face sexual exploitation as well as all the challenges of having uh, no food security, no clean water, access to education and health care. And you know, just as there was a death sentence over Moses' head, so too that for many today, uh, they just won't reach their first birthday because disease of poor sanitation, filthy water, lack of good diet and healthcare resource will affect infant mortality. You know, these things should break our hearts. Let's never get, uh, you know, hardened to these things because we hear it so often. But let it, as... Christ's followers as his disciples, let it constantly challenge us and soften our hearts to be a compassionate people. For so many mums around the world, they cannot protect their children because of a lack of resource to be able to do just that. They lack the, uh, the access to medical care and to health care. They lack the access to good food or whatever. That's the disparity of those who live in the wrong postcode. Back to Moses, I love the spirit of Jochebed, who said to the oppressor of her people, you're not going to have my child. And so she takes a little basket and she makes it waterproof and and she places this little three-month-old child in the basket. I guess he's beginning to make a bit of a noise and so she can't hide him any longer. And so she places him in the basket and puts the basket into the river Nile amongst the bulrushes and the reeds. And then she tells her daughter Miriam to stay close and to watch what happened. Uh, Listen, church, don't let the enemy take from what you, what God has invested in you. Jochebed was a mum who had a son and she wasn't going to let him go. She was going to do everything in her power to see this little one raised up. And you know, God has invested in each one of us uh, something of his nature, something of his gift, something of of his ability, of his grace. And that is a good deposit in your life. And don't let the enemy take that. 
through disillusionment or fear or insecurity or worry. Hold on to what God has put into your life. Protect it, watch over it, grow it. Because who knows, when the time is right, God will use it in his plan of bringing salvation and help and comfort and deliverance to others as well. We have a responsibility. But what faith she exhibits, she knows that she's got to do something. And what a risk she takes putting this baby into a crocodile infested river. But you know what? Jochebed had heard the stories handed down through the generations that God was a faithful God. Do you believe that God is a faithful God? Do you believe that in your life? No matter what's going on, no matter what the situation you're facing right now, I want to tell you, church, that God is faithful. That God is faithful. He's not let you go. He's not forgotten you. He's the God who sees you. He's the God who knows you. He cares about you so much. Maybe this morning you're feeling, well, God's forgotten me. He doesn't care about me. God never slumbers nor sleeps. His eye is always upon you. How precious to me are your thoughts, David, the psalmist says. He's always thinking about you, but he's working his purpose out in your life. And Jochebed had heard the stories handed down that God was a faithful God. And God was about to display his faithfulness and implement his plan of rescue. So Miriam is watching. And verse 5 says that Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank, probably trying to spot a safe place for her to bathe. And that's when she saw the basket. Maybe that's, uh, she even heard a little cry or something and she tells her servants to bring it to her. Now look, here's an interesting thing. You see, Jochebed put the basket in the Nile and I guess it was fairly close to where she lived there in Goshen. Now, the question is this, and again, go with me a little bit on this. The question is this, why would the princess be walking in that area? It was well out of her TH Thebes postcode. It was dangerous for her to be there. And why on earth would she want to wash and bathe in the part of the river where the Hebrews bathed and wash their clothes and probably goats and cattle moved about in? You see, this area would be downstream from the palace. And the Hebrews would bathe uh, in the dirty water of the Egyptians, not the other way around. Now, the only thing that I can think of is that somehow, somehow, the basket moved upstream. The basket moved upstream. What was the somehow? Maybe the somehow was God. You see, he moved it against the tide. He moved it against the current. He moved it against the expectations of what was the norm. Can I tell you, church, this morning, God is very good at taking that which is despised and rejected and worthless and downstream in the eyes of the world and sending them upstream. Amen? Come on, you can get excited this morning. You don't have to be a reserved English person or whatever nationality you are if it's reserved. Come on, let's break out this morning. If the Word of God encourages you, let's get involved with the Word of God. I said this, that uh, God is very good at taking that which is despised and rejected and worthless and downstream in the eyes of the world and sending them upstream. Come on. 1 Samuel 2 verse 8 says this, He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them among princes and bestows on them a crown of honour. Wow, what a God. What a saviour. He's the one who reaches down. He graces down and he lifts people up regardless of their circumstances. God loves you today. God knows you today. God is for you today. What an incredible saviour we have. Listen, you may be at the bottom of the pile. You may feel that life has not served you well. Perhaps you feel like you're you're in a place of containment or it's like there's a sentence. It's like there's a sentence over your life. Do you know, even as I say that, I think there's people here with a sentence over your life. It could be that it's a word, an actual word that has been spoken, a sentence that's been spoken over you that is holding you back and has held you back and contained you for many, many years. 
a sentence that has brought negativity and fear and insecurity. You're worthless. You're rubbish. You won't amount to anything. You look at your circumstances. You're never going to break out of it. And it's a word that has come to you and has held you down. And this morning, God wants to change the sentence over your life. He wants you to know that you're loved. He wants you to know that you're worthwhile, that he sent Jesus to die. Why would a man come and die and shed his blood on a cross if he didn't think it was worth coming for? God loves you today and he wants to change the sentence over your life. He wants to redeem you and set you free. You may feel like you're on the ash heap, but can I tell you, church, my God is the God of the upstream. My God is the God of the upstream. He can take your current position and he can move you to a higher place upstream. He's the God who turns lives around and brings hope and transformation. And when he does that, it's not just for you, but it's for those around you. Because, uh, you know, God always does things in you before he does things around you. Because then uh, it's for the salvation of others as well. And we will see what he does with Moses. Well, Pharaoh's daughter tells the servants to bring the basket. But what attracted her first? Uh, and what did she do? And what can we learn from her actions? You see, God was going to use this young woman in his purpose, and he wants to use us in his purpose of lifting children and young people out of their circumstances into a better future. Here's a few things that I want to share with you this morning. Here's the first thing. Number one, the princess, she heard the baby crying. I want to ask you this morning, will you hear the cry of the poor? You, you, we, we've begun this series on social action. Natalie would have been talking about it last week. You know, Will you hear the cry of the poor and the broken? Will you open your ears to that which may not be comfortable, but is essential that we do? The word says in Proverbs 21 verse 13, if a man shuts his ear to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. Well, that's a bit of a heavy verse, isn't it? I don't like that one. Uh, Claire, I like the verses like, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Or I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you a hope and to give you a future. Or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are the verses I like. What about you? But then the Holy Spirit slips in a few difficult ones. If a man shuts his ear to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. What? God, don't you love me? Don't you want to answer my prayer? I thought you were a loving father. And God says, yeah, I, I am. And I do and I will. But I want you to understand my heart. And I want you to understand the process and what breaks my heart. In Isaiah 58, the, the people of God were saying, God, we've done everything. We've prayed and fasted and you're not listening to us. God gets angry with them. He says, on the day of your fast, you abuse those who work for you. You, you tread on the backs of the poor. You're greedy for gain. Is not this the kind of fast that I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice, to set the captive free, to give food to the hungry and shelter to the, uh, to the homeless and clothing to the naked? Then your light will rise. Then your healing will come. You see, there's always a pattern. And we need to understand the pattern that God uh, has, has, uh, has given to us. If a man shuts his ear to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. Come on, let's hear the cry of the poor this morning. The second thing is this, she saw a baby, not a deliverer. You see, the very means of delivering the people out of captivity was in her hands, but all she could see was a baby. It's like, I've got this accessory now, a baby. I've got to have one of those, you know? Uh, but uh, she couldn't see what the baby would become. I love that Jesus came as a baby. In fact, there was a sentence of death over his life as well as Herod, another mad king, was killing all the baby boys. But he came small and vulnerable and helpless, and he would be the savior of the world. Look, some of you sponsor a child already. What do you see in that picture that's on your mantelpiece or stuck to the fridge or, or whatever it is? Do you see a little child, vulnerable and small, or do you see a deliverer? Do you see a, a community changer? Do you see a nation transformer? Because that's what our kids are becoming when you invest in their life and you enable them and empower them and equip them to become all that God wants them to be. 
Uh, they're heading upstream because God's greater purpose is at work in their life and they're becoming all that he wants them to be. Who knows where uh, little Gifty is gonna, uh, what she's gonna become as somebody invests in her life today. Here's the third thing. She identified a child at risk. She recognized the baby was a Hebrew child and, and probably she should have handed him over, but she was smitten. And I'm praying today that God will connect your heart with one of these precious children today so that they can escape the circumstances that are against them. You know, so many girls are subject to abuse and exploitation, early marriage, pregnancy. Can you imagine? I've got two girls. I've got a granddaughter. Can I imagine them being married at the age of 12? No, I can't. Can I imagine them having a baby at the age of 13, maybe through rape? or through abuse in some way. Perhaps they've been out walking five kilometers to get some water to bring home to their family and then they're taken advantage of on the way back. And then because they're corrupted, nobody's gonna marry them. So the, the rapist marries them because it's an honor marriage. And now this young girl is subject to abuse all the way through her adolescence. By the time she's 14, 15, she's had a second child. By the time she's 18, she's had a third child. Maybe that child has got HIV because uh, that's what the partner had and passed on through. Maybe by the age of 21, that girl is dead because there was no uh, resource or access to medication and antiretrovirals. This is the, this is the reality. You say, Tim, I, I came to worship the Lord this morning to get a word that will encourage my heart. Can I tell you, this is the heart of God. And we need to understand the reality of those who face the challenges of poverty day by day. It's not just a case of not having nice food or uh, access to clean water. These are the results of these things. These are the, uh, the, the how it spirals out of control and uh, moves into even worse circumstances. She identified a child at risk. Can you change her life like Gifty and give her a hope and a future. If she can get a job and she can get a, a qualification through education, she can get a job, then she can get money, then she's got spending power, then she's got a voice, then she can uh, make a difference and uh, she'll change her community. Here's another one. She asks someone to nurse him. Quick as a flash, Miriam jumps up and says, I know someone who could look after the baby. She's a good girl, this one. So she goes and gets her mum, Jochebed. How cool is that? Listen, in compassion, we're not in the business of taking children out of that situation and putting them in a home run by Westerners. No, what we want to do is we want to empower that family. We want to empower that child because those are the best people to look after them. What is compassion? We're a marketing organization over in the West that are just speaking up for these precious kids and saying, come on, let's invest in them so that the people on the ground, the people who know the culture and the context and the language can do what they do best. And they're the ones who can uh, help support that family and cause it to become all that God wants it to become. Uh, teaching and training and developing that family. Here's another one. She paid for his care and support. Incredible. Jochebed gets her child back. And not only that, but someone, out, someone else carries the burden of financial care. You know, the princess was going to pay to do that. I wonder if that was the first child sponsorship. No, don't push it, Tim. Don't push it. Okay. You see, when you sponsor or invest in a child, you get to invest in their needs. Their, that, that 28 pound a month will lift the burden of care and will spill over into the lives of the siblings and the rest of the family. So the whole family is going to rise up as well. I'm sure that Miriam and Aaron benefited as well. Going really quick this morning because I've got to go to Bexhill in a minute. Here's another one. She took him from a river to a palace. Later, as Moses got older... He went to live in the palace of Pharaoh. Acts 7, 22, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and in action. See, this boy was moving upstream. He was going forward. He was going up. And I could tell you story after story of children who've gone through our program who are now politicians in their governments, who are now lawyers and doctors and engineers and teachers and pastors and, and uh, uh, you know, healthcare workers and community changers, business people, biz people who are employing others and making a difference in their communities. We're just going to roll a video now, if we could, please. It's called The Least of These. Uh, it's just a one-minute video. And uh, then I'm going to jump back up, do one last thing, and then I'm going to ask you to do something. And then we're going to move on. What?
in a given week will go at least for three days without food. The friends that I played with in the neighborhood got captured and was being trained to become child soldiers. We would beg our parents just to buy one apple, but even the rotten ones we could not afford to buy. In a period of 18 months, I lost my small brother Patrick, my mom, and I lost my stepdad because of the terrifying disease of HIV AIDS. When my mother died, I was lost. I was looking for hope, for God to just show me that everything was going to be okay. Not knowing what tomorrow will look like, not knowing whether I would have a home, whether we would live to see the next day. I don't know why Aaron Mitchell decided to sponsor me, but when he did, my whole life changed. A group of people from Compassion showed up at my church. They said, you're gonna go to school, and then somebody's going to write to you. I don't have to worry about whether my parents would have enough money to keep me going to school. Even if I get sick, someone was there to take care of me. I felt safe. I felt wanted. My sponsor is Edwin Bunny. Maria and Han Shrew. Aaron, me too. Five women from a Lutheran church that were sponsoring me. I am now a physical therapist and I'm working in a hospital. Clinical social worker. I was the first child in my family to go to high school, to go to college. I have a bachelor and a master in, in, in biomedical engineering, a second master in engineering management, and uh, they called me into ministry, so I had to go and get a third master. I have a ministry called Youth Arise Africa that works with boys who don't have father figures. We opened a small school. It's not providing the same opportunity that Compassion provided to me so that they too can break out of the cycle of poverty. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. You do for me. You did for me. You did it for me. Sponsor a child today to break the cycle of poverty in a child's life like my sponsor did for me. Whatever you did for the least of these, you did it for me. Incredible stories of hope and transformation. You know, because of that princess's love and support, Moses changed the history of the world. The word says that they saw that he was no ordinary child. When I look at children like Gifty, she's no ordinary child. In fact, there's no ordinary child. Every child is special and precious in his sight. Moses became the deliverer of the Hebrew people, he took them out of Egypt and through the Red Sea and through the wilderness right to the promised land. Thank God that uh, that princess was involved in raising up that young boy and that God moved him upstream into a position of influence and power. Why don't you just pray with me this morning as we come to a close? And I'm going to ask you very simply to do something. You know, I believe that, that God is speaking to people all across this auditorium in different ways. Maybe this morning you need a savior. Claire's already uh, helped us to understand a little bit more. We've only got to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Turn away from living for yourself and turn to Jesus. Make him Lord of your life. Put him first. That's a response. That's the best response that you can do this morning. Maybe this morning it is that as we talk with the kids, you think, do you know what? I'm always thinking about the next thing and thinking about what I haven't got and what I need and all that. Maybe that's a response. God, help me to be grateful. Help me to have an attitude of gratitude and to live simply so that Others can simply live. Maybe this morning it's to really lean in and hear what it is that the Holy Spirit is saying in this social action series. What is it that he's wanting you to be personally involved in? Maybe it's in food bank. Maybe it's in uh, CAP. Maybe it's in other areas of support here in Hastings and in the community. Let God touch your heart for the poor. Will you hear the cry of the poor this morning? Or maybe it's to invest in a child and to help Michael and the City of Grace Church 
to be able to extend their reach, to empower them so that they can reach out to that community with the good news of the gospel. Because this is what it's doing through those children and through those families. Maybe to invest in, in a gifty or maybe invest in a kakeli and change your life. The word says she named him Moses because I drew him out of the water. Maybe today you can draw out one of those precious children, lift them up and help them to start moving upstream. If you'd like to sponsor a child this morning and invest in a child, then we've got so many and uh, Janet and some of the others are going to be over on the stand and they're going to help you just to fill out a little form here so that we can get some details and then we'll send you a pack in the post over the next couple of weeks and you can start that, uh, that relationship of writing in letters, download the Compassion UK app and you can make a difference to the child that you sponsor. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you for listening to uh, the Word of God, and I pray that God will move upon every heart here today in Jesus' name. Amen.